Hello viewers, in this video we will be playing the seventh mission of William Wallace, The Battle of Falkirk. The only way that we can hold the boggy lowlands around Falkirk is to build a castle and as many walls as we can construct in a short time. These fortifications will serve to protect our camp as we construct siege weapons with which to assault the English castle. Once the castle is constructed, Wallace himself is sworn to join our forces. Together, we will attack Longshanks and his English troops. We have two main objectives. The first one is build a castle and the second one is destroy the English castle. We have three hints. The first one is Scots are restricted to a population limit of 100. So that's an additional 25 from last time. From the last mission. The second tip is this scenario uses the advanced commands interface. Although you do not need to use this interface to play Age of Empires 2, it does provide access to some more powerful ways to control your civilization. I'm not sure what they mean by the advanced commands interface. Uh, in what regard this mission is different from the last mission, I'm not sure. Maybe we can figure it out. Uh, the third hint is different civilizations have different strengths. For example, the Scots, who are represented by the Celtic civilization, have fast and powerful infantry. The Britons have long-ranged archers. The scouts report. The Scots, play one blue, will fight one final battle against the English at Falkirk. Their independence depend... Their independence relies on it. News has spread that William Wallace, player 2 yellow, is on his way with reinforcements. He is expected to arrive by ship. The English, player 3 red, have a strong presence to the south and will launch raids on your land. They are bringing infantry and the fearsome longbowmen to the field of battle. The English can attack at any time. You have some walls already, but you should complete them as soon as you have enough stone. And I really love in Definitive Edition that you're able to rotate the great gate by the felt that's holding control and uh, scrolling. Uh, I have another one here which isn't finished. So, always important with the economy at the very least to have six on food. And the reason because of that is, as you might know, that's the required number of villages. Units can garrison within a tower for defense and protection, and archers can even fire out of a tower. The required amount of villages for sustained production of villages from one town center. This is a very nice outpost. Maybe we can stop them from destroying our pretty outposts. We also... Oh, this is quite confusing. The ages. Because we have... So we have... If you have surplus resources of one type, you can sell them for gold in your market. You can then use the gold to buy what you need. To build a castle, you must first advance to the next age, the castle version.
The advanced buttons let you set combat Good states for your soldiers. A defensive oh, soldier good. will be less likely to attack an enemy that comes near him. Click a military unit, then note the combat stance buttons in the lower left corner of the screen. Okay, so it's these buttons, Damien. I didn't note it if we Using didn't the have... advanced buttons, you can also command a soldier to patrol an area between yeah. two points and guard Speaking. or follow another unit. Did it, if we didn't have these in the previous mission, I actually didn't notice that. You have enough resources to go to the castle age. You should do that soon. Twenty-two villager castle each time. That's quite early. We have. It's also very important to keep your villagers Advanced working. Advanced buttons allow access to a new type of formation. For example, with a box formation, you can protect a weak unit, such as a monk. Okay, it's quite clear we have to invest in two skirmishes. We're quite at a disadvantage to begin with with the English and Castle H and having longbowmen. Congratulations! You're going to find lots of things to do in the castle age. For starters, try building a siege workshop to make battering rams and other siege weapons. Now we can afford a castle. I'm just afraid that building a castle will trigger the enemy to attack, this being a scenario. and all the fortifications you need. So sometimes in these scenarios it's a bit awkward with the economy. Question is, where should we build a castle? So usually, in the game, you want to build a castle to eat, to protect resources, protect your own production. This infantry is really redundant, and there's only longbowmen. 
Kia, Robuja, Forgera, Bunit, Airlock, Kia, Ho. I think also it was not the best decision to go for two town centers when the pop cap is at. at um, 100. I think we're gonna build it here. So much fish, so I'm going to go for some. Well, actually, so low population. So I'm a bit. Not sure if it's actually even worth going for water since there's such a low population cap. It's also good to note that it's quite dangerous to go for a mono composition, and by mono composition it's meant that you only have one type of unit. In our case it's basically only skirmishes. And it's one you have completed the castle. So William should be here soon. And then it will be time to attack the English. All it would take would be one single knight to clean up our entire army right now. Although we have... Wow. Now we have paladins. That's... One of your most powerful units is created at the castle. Create ten more mode raiders. Uh, that's not a good idea. Why? Because the enemy is, has mostly longbowmen. So, if the enemy has really gone into archers, what you really don't want to do is create the unit that the enemy unit counters, which in this case would be infantry. And road raider is not a unit that is good versus archers. It's not really a Haskell equivalent. But since our task is to build Haskells, that's what we'll have to do, I suppose. Oh, they create quite fast. They train quite fast. With William Wallace and his war raiders on your side, the English may be in trouble. Once you have a large army with plenty of siege weapons, go destroy the English castle. Oh, there's some. There's the. Yeah, we have the man. Wow, they actually changed his, his appearance. So now yes, he he's a caper boy now. And now we're going to use one of the advanced commands here, which is stand ground. Which means they will not move out of the position. That's a good technology since we do have a castle. And since we're forced to have so much infantry with the campaign objective, it's good to give... It's always important to get upgrades for the military you get. Mm. 
So was that actually an objective or did he just say that for fun? We create 10 wall raiders starting to wonder. Okay, he just said that for fun. That's not actually an objective. Well, that's interesting. Not much we can do except except wait for the resources to float up to Imperial Age so we can start pushing since there's a castle involved with the enemy. You don't have to go to the Imperial Age to get the trebuchet. Uh, one option is also to stay in the Castle Age and get rams, but rams aren't as population it's not as an easy solution, it's of course cheaper, but it requires more population because you need at least four rams, if provided you can protect them and keep them alive, to take down a castle, I would say. So it's easiest to just go to Imperial Age and get the trebuchet. Don't forget, keep exploring the map. So it looks like they have the... the must be a completely unique... A completely unique skin for this unit for William Wallace. So he has a cape like a Teutonic Knight, but yeah, it's interesting. Also a new portrait, very interesting. So we have more gold there. Lots of balls as well. I think this might be open. Well, it's not open, but that house could easily be destroyed Forgere Kid Boon Erlov Kart Robwege Kia Robwege Robwege Erlov Forgere Kia Robwege Kid Ho Robwege now we can afford Imperial Age and up we go. Beat 
Cold. Cold. Yeah. Beat fear. Cold. Beat fear. Beat fear. Since we have so many transport ships, one thing we could do is simply bypass the straight here and just go. Also, we have stone we're not using, we might as well make a little. Do I think might always so these paladins are already pre upgraded, so to say. Trebuchets are massive siege weapons with a great range, available only in the Imperial Age. Remember that trebuchets must be packed to move and unpacked to fire. It's also important to note that deep sea fish gathers a lot faster than shore fish with fishing ships. Scout out the layout of the enemy base here, see how it looks like. Right, there's the castle. What I just did there was I, I toggled off the farm receding. We're floating more food than we're using anyway, and we need the wood right now. So, with the farm receding enabled, a lot of wood will be just keep automatically being spent. And I want to afford a trebuchet right now, so we needed the wood. Uh, one mistake on my part is I have neglected getting the Bobosa. As you can see, it costs only 150 food, 100 wood, and they chop 10-20% faster, which is really... It's a no-brainer. You really need that upgrade. Well, you don't necessarily need it, but think of it like this. If you neglect getting it, and the enemy doesn't, that can be quite a good contributing factor for the enemy against you. So far these campaigns have been quite easy, despite playing on the hardest difficulty. Although this is sort of like a campaign and tutorial baked into one for new players. So might be that no matter what difficulty you choose, these are just as easy, I'm not sure. Love. 
Did a little sneak here. And it's down. Mission accomplished. The English castle at Falkirk is no more. The English pretensions in Scotland are surely at an end. The forces of Wallace are triumphant. It looks certain that we would be defeated at Falkirk. Yet somehow, though outnumbered and outranged by English longbows, we were victorious. The English castle was torn down. And a Scottish one shall be built in its place. William Wallace has shown us the path to victory. Although he is but one man, he inspires great deeds in others. Many of the Scottish knights and lords have drawn their swords with his. Wallace's own sword is a five and a half foot beast, forced of course in Scotland. He has sworn not to rest until his sword finds the neck of Edward Longshanks. The struggle will continue, for we have learned the ways of war. Now, what is the English we fear? That was the seventh and last mission of William Wallace, the Battle of Falkirk. A resounding almost virtually 10 to 1 kill-death ratio. Also, I suppose history is written by the victor. It may look like we had the largest army by 50 and the enemy had only 13, but as the narrator said, we were outnumbered. Makes much a more glorious heroic history, I suppose, so we'll leave it at that. <laughs> Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next campaign.